Now this whole concept was, as you can see, is intriguing, so people decided, let's see what we can do with photoelectrochemistry. <coughs> The, uh, the fact that we don't need a, in electrochemistry, we can avoid this requirement for a sacrificial oxidant that we've added to the system uh, by using the electrochemical cell and other electrodes, and that can help us out. So we can use the under potential to have uh, an electrical production. So there's three basic types, and one type we'll call a photovoltaic process, where we're gonna use light and a semiconductor material to produce electricity. And the idea here is that we're gonna rely on the fact that we make an under potential oxidation and, um, and then use a irregular electrode to bleed off that, those electrons and use it to drive a load. So here we would have a P-type semiconductor acting now as a photocathode and it would be biased. It would, no, it would not be biased, I'm sorry. But we would have attached to it a load, which will signify just by a resistor. It could be a, a light, a motor, uh, something else. And then that would be hooked up to a second electrode here. And this would be a P-type semiconductor. One example would be uh, molybdenum selenide, molybdenum sulfide, I should say, MOS2. Here in this case, we would get a promotion of electrons uh, by light, and the electrons now will accumulate at the interface, which now are now available, and um, it can take species, say iron three plus, convert them to iron two plus, the iron two plus now can go back to iron three plus by dropping that electron off at the second electron, which for example might be platinum. And so we can develop a potential here which would be dependent on the under potential that was developed in the photocathodic current. You saw with titanium dioxide that was about one volt, and so that's probably what we'd be talking about, one volt and, and some, about some level there. And that would be just dependent on the amount of light we could impinge on that semiconductor and the concentration of the species in there. Of course, there's some tricky things about it because those are both colored, well, the iron too is particularly is a colored species, so you don't want it to absorb light, and you want to absorb the light in the proper frequency. And also, if you want to do this over and over again, you gotta make very sure that your semiconductor is uh, stable, and if it corrodes even a very small amount, it's gonna not be stable for more than a few weeks probably, so. Uh, but you can get electrons to flow through your load, and, um, you okay back there? Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's not, a pretty, it's not a very efficient way to do things because if, if that's all you're doing is producing electricity, there's actually more efficient ways of doing it. There's a lot of problems with doing it. But, so you don't want to, photovoltaic cells are not, because uh, you can use solid state semiconductor photovoltaic cells that are much more efficient than this is, for example. So that's not a big area of research. The other, the other, the one area of research that is important is photosynthesis. Uh, and we should call photoelectrosynthesis because uh, plants do photosynthesis pretty good. So what we're trying to do is electrosynthesis is uh, trying to mimic uh, biological systems in the in the field or the laboratory, but to produce some other sorts of compounds rather than sugars. We want to produce something else useful industrially. The idea here would be we'd have a semiconductor material. In this case, an n-type material for the example. Strontium uh, titanium oxide. We get a photopromotion of the electron. In this case, the holes will go to the surface. At that point, the hole will act to oxidize water, producing um, 
hydrogen, and um, oxygen. And we would have some sort of a separator here, which would prevent those two solutions from mixing. At the other electrode, which is now driven by the bias that's developed here, so the electrons are being, there's a, there's a sort of a pressure of electrons now, which is a voltage. And so that other electrode now, if it's platinum electrode, can do all kinds of things for different species. So we can take O to R by adding those electrons that are being developed by the photo process on the other system. So we can generate oxygen um, and uh, generate some re useful reduced species in this uh, thing. So for example, people have done it to reduce carbon dioxide. which uh, is always nice because you can reduce carbon dioxide, which is available for free uh, from most, from the air, make something useful out of it. Photocatalytic cells. The idea here is taking a reaction that is slow, and driving get faster using the photocatalysis process. So in this case, we've got holes in the system and what we can do is take acetic acid and oxidize it to carbon dioxide plus protons or hydrogen. And um, What do I have there? C two H six. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. And ethane. And uh, then that uh, reaction then can be used to drive another reaction as well. So the photocatalytic can be used to produce uh, electrons in the photosynthesis process or it can photocatalyze reactions that would not otherwise go. We can't easily uh, oxidize the, the uh, acetic acid to those products, but the presence of the holes is kind of an unusual reagent and it can actually can do that process. And it can speed up these slow reactions. So synthesis, photosynthesis, I guess the idea would be that we would actually make new products that were not thermodynamically favored. Photocatalytic would do a thermodynamically favored process, but in a much more rapid way. And um, again, always the process is the photo, problem is photo corrosion. All of these, you have to worry about corroding the process. And you're not gonna do these on the lab top scale, you want to do these industrially, so you have to be very sure that you're not going to corrode your cells and have to replace expensive um, silicon electrodes or titanium dioxide electrodes uh, every few weeks. One way that people have tried to do that is to add, you can add um, layers, protective layers on top of the system, some sort of polymeric layers or other layers that will try to prevent that corrosion from happening. The other problem is uh, light is not always efficiently coupled into the system. And uh, the, one of the things people have done is to add dyes to the, the um, semiconductor. Here we have, uh, a wavelength diagram where we looking at the production of oxygen evolution from a zinc oxide 
electrode. Now normally that's not a very efficient process at normal solar type uh, levels of irradiation. Uh, it will occur if you have UV light in the system. Uh, so it goes way up as you increase the, decrease the wavelength of the system. Um, but if you add on top of that a dye, rhodamine B, in a small amount, well actually you could add it to the system. What you see now is a result, something like that, a small amount of dye acts to couple the electrons um, more efficiently through the system. Rhodamine B. How does that work? Well, the idea is that the dye adds a second step in the overall process. The light is coupled first into the dye, and um, which is at the surface, and the dye undergoes an electron promotion process just like a dye would. It's absorbing light in the system, so the electrons get promoted at the dye level. And because of the bending of the bands, that electron now sees that potential energy change of the bent bands, and it will go down that bend band just as before. So the electrons will drain off in that system. It doesn't recombine again because we have this uh, potential field to drive those holes and electrons away from each other. So in the semiconductor, we can separate out those electrons and holes that are produced at the dye level. And of course, once we've got those separated holes and electrons, those holes now accumulate in the dye layer, which now can be used to um, produce an oxidized species from a reduced species. So it does allow you to use longer wavelength lights because the light is not used to directly excite the titanium dioxide or the zinc oxide in this case. You just need it to um, provide the energy, band, the band gap bending that you need to do the separation of the holes and the electrons. So it does allow using longer wavelengths, lower energy light, um, but you do lose some driving force. The whole energy that's formed is now at a lower energy than it would be at the titanium dioxide, so you lose some capability there. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the possible things. I've got a couple of references in your, in your notes, and those are kind of old now, but um, uh, still pretty good. And the fact that one we're talking about today is, is probably based on some of these ideas too. All right.